everyone, it's Heather and I'm back with another video. Um, this video is going to be talking about Fantasia, which is Disney's number three full-length animated feature. And I absolutely love Fantasia. It is one of my favorite films probably of all time, not just Disney movies. And it's probably in like at least my top ten of just Disney movies. I've watched it lots and lots of times as a kid, like all the way through adulthood. Um, and then I also own the DVD that they put out, I think it was 10 years ago. It was like their 75th or 70th anniversary. I can't, I'd have to go look and check it. But um, so I have that and I've watched it like way too many times to count. But um, I have lots of things to say about it. <laughs> so. Fantasia. Um, it's set up, it's the first of lots of different Disney movies where it's set up in chunks of like little snippets of animation rather than just a full length feature film. It's kind of, um, I mean these ones are go on for longer than some of the other ones but I think that this works really well because it's still like all coincides with each other and they kind of all have their own theme going on. Tchaikovsky music, when they talk about the Nutcracker scene, um, there's multiple scenes with fairies, but they do kind of come back to them over on. So, anyway, so that's the first one. I know that's not the first, um, it's not the first piece of music from the movie, but it's like the first one that really <laughs> I can talk about. So, the Nutcracker suite. Uh, I love the Sugar Plum fairies. Um, I think they're adorable. And also, I... <laughs> So one thing that Disney Plus added when you begin your movie is the one thing I didn't talk about with Pinocchio is that they added on like a little snippet at the beginning where it says, oh, there's characters shown smoking. And in fact, it's actually all but two characters, I think, have smoked in that movie. So <laughs> I believe I did count. Um, but Fantasia didn't have any little clippets. Um, I mean, there's there's some things I cut out, which I'll, I'll bring up later, but... Um, so I feel like some people had talked about the mushrooms in the Nutcracker Suite um, being, like, kind of, like, racist, racist stereotypes um, a little bit, but they didn't say anything about that in there, so maybe Disney doesn't feel like they're, like, depicting any sort of, sort of, like, racial stereotype, um, I feel like it's still a little, you gotta remember this movie is still 80 years old, um, at the time of recording this, oh, it's 79 years old right now, but, um, it'll be 80 next year, and the world was a different place, and things have changed, obviously, for the better, most things, and, <laughs> um, it's just, I don't know. I guess it's like take it with what you will, take it as a grain of salt kind of thing. I don't think it goes on long enough or really like brings up too many like specifics to one type of race. So, um, I just as long as you think of them as cute mushrooms, I feel like it's it, it's probably fine. So moving on, um, there are two underwater scenes in uh, out of three. Oh, I want to mention that. So this is actually the second underwater scene in, out of three films so far um, in, in a Walt Disney movie and I kinda <laughs> I don't know if it's like Walt Disney had a thing for fish but the fish are animated very sexy <laughs> I feel like there's a even in like Pinocchio there was like a couple like fish that were like like very feminine and then this one absolutely there's very feminine fish in it and I'm like <laughs> I, I wonder, did he, do you have a thing for fish? I don't know, one of the animators have a thing for fish? And, um, I love the, uh, I, I love the seasons with the fairies. I love the winter fairies especially. I think that the animation in that scene is, is absolutely gorgeous. And it, it, that's worth it. Like, you have to remember too, it wasn't animated with CGI or anything. It was all pencil and paper or anything. It's, like, it's so, like, breathtaking and spectacular. I, I, I absolutely love animation so much and I think they did an incredible job with it and it holds up like incredibly well now even now um so moving along the next the next sequence is the sorcerer's apprentice and I mean everyone pretty much knows this one it's the Mickey with the blue hat <laughs> and all I have to say about this one is that one day the broom uprising will overcome us all next one <laughs> the rate of spring is um 
one it's basically about the creation of the universe uh creation of earth basically and um going through all the dinosaurs and different like how so again 80 years old so information about the dinosaurs a bit dated as well um so i think we all pretty much uh, agree that um a meteor hit the earth and dinosaurs were probably wiped out that way but you know there's still other things to take into consideration but they do talk about how they they were like pretty sure that dinosaurs died because there's no water and <laughs> It just became a big giant dust bowl, and then they all died. So, I'm not entirely sure about that one. <laughs> um, funny thing about my childhood, I guess, to relate to this, is that I used to think that giraffes were direct descendants of dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus, because they both had long necks. So <laughs> and then I realized that they weren't the same type of animal. So <laughs> um, but I'm actually kind of surprised that this movie is, is still rated G, because several creatures basically brutally get murdered right on display of the film um you see like a couple dinosaurs die and you also see um like them all just die from like extinction like at the end of the at the end of the uh, the end of that sequence um so next sequence is i guess the next one is the intermission which isn't a sequence but a funny thing i have to say about that is that I used to be in band for a long time when I was growing up in grade school. And I, I think it's funny that when they return, then they come back. So they see, they see everybody walking out, see all their shadows, and then they come back in. And I just want to say it's kind of accurate because when you come back from band, you come back from like your intermission, you come back from break, you, everyone just sits down and just starts playing random sounds and music to yourself. It's, it's very accurate. So. <laughs> Um, I played clarinet in band for uh, five years-ish, so <laughs> just kind of like sit down and just start like doodling to yourself. Um, <laughs> so next one is the Pastoral Symphony, which is my absolute favorite sequence of the whole film. And I think it's hugely inspiring to me and a lot of other artists because I could see the inspiration in like a lot of people's artwork if you can't tell i like drawing fantasy creatures <laughs> um, um i think that so to bring up the whole like scenes that they deleted so there was i'm sure you can look this up like way better than i could explain but if you don't already know there's a couple characters that, that depicted outdated racial stereotypes of uh african-american people and it's a little unsettling seeing the scene <laughs> what they did to erase this was kind of weird because what they did was they there were huge gaps like um kind of in the film like you would see like one character sitting off to the right side of the screen like one of the centaurs and there'd be nothing going on on the left side and it's like if you know anything about filmmaking <laughs> you would know you usually center your character or you, you know, you, there's something supposed to be going on on the other side. Um, and they also did stuff like they played the scenes twice in a row. Like, I thought it was like going crazy. <laughs> I don't know, I've only seen like this version, but for some reason now that I know all the background information about like what happened and everything, it's a lot more obvious, like watching it again. <laughs> um, and then you can also see when Bacchus or Dionysus, whatever you want to call him, um, he comes on. He's like in like a little chariot thing, and then you see the on you see the carpet roll out from in front of him, and it's just rolling up the stairs up up the stairs by itself. Like <laughs> doesn't make any sense, but that's where one of the characters was. Um, I personally, how I feel like they could have handled this better was not to erase them completely, but to reanimate them as non-stereotypical. <laughs> Um, keep them, I don't know, keep them still dark-skinned characters, That I think that would be fine. I feel like just make them, like, not a racist stereotype, you know? <laughs> make them, like, normal-looking people. <laughs> like, they are. <laughs> so, um, I don't think it should have been, you know, they could have, they could have made them, like, super cu cute and adorable, and I don't know, it's, it's unfortunate they could have done so much better with it. So, um, I'm glad that there's still like the zebra girls which are 
you know, still black characters. And I feel like they're gorgeous looking. So <laughs> I'm glad they're still there, honestly. Um, and then one other thing I just want to add about this sequence is that Zeus shows up and I feel like, <laughs> is he just mad because no one invited him to the party? Because that's kind of what it seems like. He's just like, guys, <laughs> just starts throwing lightning bolts at him because he's, he's mad at them. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So for the next one, it's Dance of the Hours. And this one I actually remember the most from childhood. I have like a pretty vivid scene of like, in my head, like, I think it was, I don't know exactly. It was like, I was just thinking about like the, the hippos and the elephants and stuff and their little like ballerina tutus. And, um, I, I this, this seemed like, like in my head, like play, played a lot as a child, I guess. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I really like anthropomorphic animals. So, I mean, I mean, I think most people do. So, <laughs> Um, that might be why, like, as a kid, like, you, you kind of, like, stick to the animal scenes, I guess, more than anything. Um, but, you know, I kind of, it's kind of hard to listen to the song without hearing, you know, Hello Mana, Hello Flata <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, hello Mana, Hello Flata, that, that song. So, um, and then one other thing is that that yellow hippo, it, she really steals the show. I think she's awesome. So the last se sequence... So the last sequence is the Night on Bald Mountain in Ave Maria. And as a kid, I feel like I wasn't a huge fan of this one. I wasn't necessarily like scared of it or anything. I didn't have like, <sighs> this is one of those scenes I think a lot of kids were like freaked out as a, as a child, but um, I didn't really like get like scared of like horror, like films like that. <laughs> I got scared of like weird, like, I just, I got, like, weirded out by kind of, like, unsettling things more than, like, because I watch, like, horror movies. Like, I watch, like, Beetlejuice and stuff as a kid, and, like, that it didn't really bother me. <laughs> those, those are the kind of things that weird me out. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, I do appreciate it a lot more. I think that Chernabog is kind of amazing looking. I think he's, like, superimposing on the top of that mountain and it's like awesome just seeing up there and it's like those wings are I don't know it's really cool um but I also love the star contrast with the second part um the Ave Maria is obviously it's beautiful it's like it's the chorus the choir they sing it like gorgeously and I really love the lighting and the composition of the shots especially um I don't know for sure which I can't I feel bad because I can't remember the names of each animator but I think it's the same animator that does Saving Beauty that did the background it did remind me a lot um the way it was composed the animation the, the backgrounds and the animation done in Ave Maria I feel like because the, the very tall trees and the really light background and the dark trees in the foreground it reminded me a lot of Sleeping Beauty, and I know one of the nine old men did that one. So, I think that it's gorgeous, and I think uh, it's like just I, it's really cool, like dark and then light coming back, and then I. Uh, anyway, so I just want to say Fantasia, one of the best movies ever. If you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're waiting for. Definitely go watch it because it's fantastic. Um, it's the longest Disney movie ever created. I think it's like just over two hours long um, and it doesn't feel like it. It never does, <laughs> but I've watched it many times and I'm sure I'll watch it again soon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. Bye everyone. Thank you as always to my patrons, Andrew and Lindo, Ben Wright Human, Brandon Tinge, Colin Warmbrot, Council of Geeks, Dark Leap Master, Hexapus Inc., Jack Mahan Tenney, Jesse Girona, Merrick Bennett, Story Comic, and as always, a very special thank you to my $10 patrons, Corbin Kovalt and Steve Zarzinski.